talk again. Not everyone, but Paul. <laughs> we have noticed that on board. Uh, yeah, so originally for the conference last year, there were going to be a number of boys going to be here with Alopecia, so I was all lined up to speak to them about uh, my experiences. But unfortunately, they couldn't make it today, so I thought, well, a lot of you have probably heard me speak before, possibly, at various conferences and various things. So I thought, well, I've been involved in alopecia support groups and other things for about 17 years. Uh, I know a lot of people with alopecia internationally. Um, and I know a lot of people who have had uh, universalis like me since childhood. So I thought, well, it might be a good idea to share what I think are the experiences of a male. Hi, I'm Bex. Um, yeah, I thought because I know a lot of people's stories and a lot of people's experiences, so I thought, well, I often get asked, oh, do you think it's different being a male with alopecia? And it's sort of, yes, no, no, yes, you know, it's quite strange. So I thought, what I'll do, I'll give you a little bit of my background um, and then what the experiences that I've had with my friends who have also got AU, um, who are male and female, to see, you know, where, where does being male or female start to be completely different? Um, so my background, uh, I've had alopecia universalis since I was five. I did a lot of, hopefully I can learn if I can need to occasionally look. Um, so like everyone I know at that age, basically you're five and then six, seven, and your hair falls out, and that's it. <laughs> you know, um, this happened to me in 1981, so there was no internet, uh, there was no internet for the doctors to Google, stuff like that. So I was told I was a very stressful five-year-old. Uh, all I did was play. Um, I wore a wig from when I was about six or seven through to when I was about 20. Uh, it was a wig from a place called Barrington Hair Studio, which is what has become Freedom Wigs. Um, and back then, you know, Deanna from Freedom Wigs was telling me about, you know, when you do your scalp, it's uh, laser imaging and stuff like that. Uh, well, for me, it was, I was taken into a garage and there was a big blue tarpaulin on the floor and a stool. Uh, they glad wrapped your head, then got a black vivid and drew, you know, where the fringe lines and all the other stuff were. Um, and then they made a plaster of Paris cast of your head. So I sat there in this garage, um, and they're whopping, you know, plaster bandages. I think it's like the, you, know, you break your leg to hold it. Yep. So you'd sit there, exactly. yep, plonk, plonk, and then you'd have to sit there for half an hour while they sit in this garage board. And your parents would be talking, just sort of sitting there, and then a little dribble of mouth going down your face. And, this. and then after it set, they would try to rip, somehow get it off your head, um, which is pretty fun, but you know, it's like that sort of wig experience to get this thing off your head, and like, oh my god, that was, um, that was awful. So, so that, was, that was fun. Um, so I wore a wig all through school uh, and through university, uh, and then when I was about 20, 21, um, I'm from an Irish family, so I went back to Ireland to live. And it was there I ditched the wig, and I thought, oh, well, you know, no one here actually knows me. So, ah, let's see how I get on without a wig. So, off the wig went. Um, so I lived in Europe for, lived in Ireland for about three years, lived in England for about four years. And it was then, when I was, you know, between about 2000, 2004, I started to try to find out more about alopecia, because it's a thing called the internet. Amazing. Um, so I actually got involved in the Alopecia UK chat groups. Um, there's a few charities, there were like three or four charities over here who do like year forums and stuff like that. So I started to learn about Alopecia, but I got to meet um, online heaps of people that you know, were like me. Um, you know, they'd grown up with Alopecia and we shared all their experiences. It's really good, they're still friends of mine today. So I met first person in real life uh, in 2006 with alopecia. Um, we actually, I was a wheelchair mechanic for Paralympics New Zealand. And when they selected me, they said, oh great, two of you. What are you talking about? I said, oh, there's a guy called Ash who's, you know, he's one of you. He's like, you mean one of me? They said, you wait and see. So my first Paralympics meeting, and I walked in and everyone's going, hey, it's Minnie Ash. <laughs> okay. 
then uh, in walked Ash, he's alopecia universalis, um, he's English, and they said, you know what's going to be fun? We're going to make you two room together so you can, you can bond. <laughs> okay, so um, we do, we're doing a trip around the States, we're there for two months, and so we room together in, in that classic staunch male Kiwi thing. Uh, we never talked about alopecia for about two and a half weeks uh, until we got drunk. Um, and it was basically, oh, you got alopecia? Yep. How old do you have it? Oh, this is five. How old do you have it? Oh, since I was about three, four years ago. And that was, that was it for a while. Um, so it was, you know, you sort of think when you first meet someone with alopecia, it'd be like, you know, two people running through a field. Oh. <laughs> so it was quite strange. Um, Why not? But it was pretty cool. So uh, basically, 2010, uh, we had our daughter, um, and I experienced the joys of being told, I can wash Arabella's hair and do the conditioner and do all sort of stuff to my <laughs> and my partner was quite amused because I've never been to a hairdresser I don't have any memory of having hair um, so I've never had to wash hair or do anything to it um, I used to do a little a few things to the wigs but I've forgotten all that so my daughter asked me for a plait and I'm like, what the hell's that? <laughs> you know, I can't do that so it's been a learning experience being around here um, and then in 2011 I created the Alopecia New Zealand website because Cat from Auckland because I got pretty annoyed that you, know, you just Google alopecia in New Zealand and um, you know the wig suppliers like Freedom Works and other ones had the information and stuff like that. There was that was it, you know. And it was like I've just come from back from the UK. There's alopecia UK. There's Be Bold. There's AYP. There's all these charities, and here we've got nothing. So I thought because I run a software company, so I thought I'll do a website. Um, that was that. So the result of all that is I know a lot of people with alopecia. Um, I would say. Online, I've probably met several thousand people. Um, you know, those forums like Alopecia World. I've got a lot of friends on Facebook who've got alopecia. So I thought, you know, I'll try to speak about what's different between boys and girls. Um, so, what is it like between being a male and what do I think is different? So, obviously, I've sort of broken it up in various ages. So, you know, primary school, you know, you listen to the other speakers like Michelle and Anna, you know. You hear fools out of primary school and you might wear a cap or you might wear a wig. Um, some people have more than it. The experience seems to be the same. You know, there's kids are quite simple and pure. It's like, you know, I got my head, yeah, I'm bored. Um, I've seen kids talk like that and there's no sort of deep thinking. You know, just trying to use this pretty pure and innocent time. You know, you still get the odd comments, you still get the odd you know, mean kids or silly comments from parents and stuff like that. We all seem to go through the same sort of phases, you know, your, your family spend ages looking for treatment. Um, I spent several weeks being a human pathologer with hydrocortisone cream every night, you know, I think we've all been through that. So, so looking at it, my friends were all females who had it at the same time as me. It was the same experience, you know, children, boys and girls aren't, men aren't supposed to be bored, so we all sort of been through the same thing. I got the statistics for the work subsidy, and it's the same number of boys and girls get works from my promise of ages, which is, I was quite surprised. Um, no, yes, I only went through the statistics the other day, so it's a bit confusing on that. You can if you want. So I have the statistics up behind me, and I'll just sort of keep wrapping them on. Uh, so, secondary school, yeah, well, secondary school is tough for anyone, you know, for, regardless. So. It's, I think, all those phases of your life, you know, we've had a picture of you know, for 40 years, you know, it always seems to be when you're a kid, going somewhere new, that when you're in primary school, you sort of like, you eventually, everyone knows or they don't, when you find a group of friends, and then you go to a secondary school, and it's like, oh my God, there's like a thousand people I don't know, and you sort of, you know, so it's like a stage where you sort of, you can get nervous and anxious and worried, and make a new group of friends. So primary school, um, secondary school for me, you know, still girls and boys, primary school, uh, secondary school age, you know, you're not bored, so you, you're different. So there's not much of a difference here. You know, we all face the same, um, you know, become teenagers, develop, developing your self-awareness, your identity, things like that. We're all going through um, a similar problem. So like a lot of the others, I was actually quite shy um, and quiet. Like if I was a teenager here, you wouldn't have even spoken to me for two days. I just would have avoided um, being near people. 
Uh, so, you know, we all went through the same thing. I know the people that wore a wig, like me, I was at a wig, we've got cancer, stuff like that. Is it a wig? You know, the old fringe, weird fringe thing we used to do as a kid to prove it wasn't a wig. Um, but the people I know who went to school bald had the exact same problem. Have you got cancer? Why don't you wear a wig? You know, it's just, it seemed to be the same thing. We were all getting um, similar things sent to us. So, you know, it's it seemed to be a similar experience between boys and girls. Um, Russ and, and we still see that in the statistics for the age groups. Uh, it does seem between males and females, and this one's sort of total numbers, um, it's, it seems to be the same number of people who with this, you know, it's a bit of a correlation, but you know, it seems to age. So, yeah, secondary school is hard um, for, for some, for most. Yeah, and then the next phase is sort of 19 to 25, you know, when you become a, nine, a young adult. I sort of noticed that all the people I know of alopecia, be male or female, you end up leaving school and now you're in a different social circle and you've sort of faced some of those same things like, oh, there's lots of new people, what's going to happen? They ask questions and, and things like that. So it's, you're still growing up. So I've 